Hello everyone, this is Take from BigHeadTalker.com and welcome to BHD Studios. I'm here with my Rico GR Digital t-shirt from Uniqlo. This is like 10, 9, 10 years old. Super rare. But uh, this is my shooting review of the brand new Rico GR3. I've had it for two weeks. I wish I could have had it longer, but I do appreciate Rico Imaging North America for shipping this out to me. Just for the two weeks, I have a, a pretty darn good idea how this camera shoots uh, compared to its predecessors. Uh, this is a GR, but the GR2 is very similar to this. As well as some of the competition, uh, the closest camera to it in terms of specs and how it's used is the Fujifilm uh, XF10. Uh, but there are others that, um, that I mentioned in my, my first impressions video. But, uh, you know, I had two weeks, had a good uh, opportunity to shoot with it. So let's start the review now. So the two features that I think that makes this stand out from the previous version is the touch screen as well as the in-body image stabilization. Those are the two, shoot in terms of shooting experience, those are the two big things that, uh, that uh, I think Rico wants to sell as a selling feature, as well as um, in terms of how we interact with the camera, at least in terms of positive. Uh, I have a positive thoughts on the touch screen. It's very, very uh, responsive. It's easy to adjust some of your features, things that you thought maybe that you needed to go in screen to do so. Like when a keyboard shows up, the typing thing, you can actually just type on the little mini, mini keyboard. It reminds me of like the first generation smartphones. But as well, um, in the playback feature, uh, scrolling through, going through menus, it's very intuitive. And uh, touch focus is also very quick and intuitive. And at times in focus with Hunt, all I did was maybe focus on a part of the screen that I knew uh, that the camera wouldn't have trouble um, uh, basically locking onto. I would just press that and then sort of leave the focus and lock the focus there. So I thought that was great. As well, I really enjoyed IBIS, the in-body image stabilization in the uh, GR3. Uh, it is within context of, of this compact size and weight because the size and weight of the camera with IBIS makes a difference. So I'm shooting this video on the Fujifilm X-H1. It, it has uh, IBIS as well. This has IBIS as well. And even if they both claim to have four 4.5 stops of stabilization, the X-H1 will stabilize better because it is just a chunkier, bigger camera. It's easier to stabilize. And also, when you put the camera to your eye, the EVF, you got your two, you have two hands and your eyes. So you have three points, sort of like a tripod, to stabilize it even before IBIS kicks in. Or this one, you usually have your hand out one-handed. If you do want to stabilize, you just kind of make kind of like a, a point. Then you just kind of put this camera here and you can lock in your, your elbows when you shoot to stabilize, even though you have IBIS. And then as you press the shutter button, you exhale. So I did find that the IBIS is, it works, it's effective. I got down to, um, easily down to a quarter of a second, but you had to really, you know, be careful when you did that. One of the questions I had was, can I use this, this rear FN button, which was where the previous uh, back focus button was? Can I make this back focus? Uh, yes and no, you can, but the issue with back focus with this camera is that I don't want the shutter button to focus at all. I want this to just to, other than snap focus, if you have pressed, I don't want it to do, uh, I don't want it to refocus again. And I couldn't figure out a way to do back focus like it did with the previous GR. However, you do have the touch screen, which sort of compensates, but now you're shooting with two hands. Although I guess you could technically hold it in a way and sort of use your thumb, but, and also it's not just touch focus, it's touch drag. You can also drag it around, which is really nice. So you don't have to pinpoint like this. You can just kind of drag it till you find the exact spot. The focus point stays there. So I did find that very effective while shooting. And like the other GRs, you do have, you know, I'm, I'm again, I, as I mentioned, I'm not the biggest fan of this rear toggle. When it first came out, uh, this was the first compact point and shoot to have both a front and a rear dial, or the rear dial was not a real true spinning dial. And at that time it was like, wow, this is innovative. It's, it's, 
it's quite a few years later now, and I wish they actually went with a full spinning rear dial with push-in feature, but they don't. It's still this rear toggle. But like the other previous GRs, you press this in, and you have access to five more features that you can customize. I'll, I'll let you know what I put. Mine is snap, focus distance, uh, focus, file format, um, then what I do, uh, outdoor setting for the screen, so the screen brightness, so if you're outdoors, you can make it really bright, and if you're at night, you can make it really dim, and then finally, the, the image control, so like your JPEG profile, so those are the five that I set uh, for myself here, and also, you know, you can set that all in the custom functions, which I'll talk about that later. So that's my setup. And then I left ISO the way ISO is, which is on the D-pad, it's to the left. And then to the right, I changed that to shake reduction. So to the right, I left it as the toggling on and off the image stabilization because there are times where it does use the battery and it does start to feel warm uh, on this camera when you have IBIS on full time. And that's just the nature of how small this is and they were able to fit IBIS. And I felt the same when it was video. So not only IBIS is working, but also you're filming video. It did get warm, but it wasn't uncomfortably warm. Maybe as GR shooters, we're not used to the camera getting warm, but uh, you know, I, this is magnesium alloy with a sort of a plastic shell on different parts. And this is kind of the rubberized grip. And so I, I find that the heat is there, but it's not uncomfortably warm. But anyway, that's how I said that. Cause there are times where it's bright daylight, you're shooting at over one two thousandth of a second, you even have the neutral density filter on, which is what I have this other function button as, so I can switch it on and off. Uh, you don't really need IBIS, you know, I, I'm reasonably stable, but at night or at times where you're like, mm, do I go up ISO or do I just turn on IBIS? Uh, so I want easy access IBIS, so that's where the right toggle is, because I don't think I use self-timer uh, very often. So that's my setup of the Ricoh GR. And overall my shooting experience was uh, pretty darn good. A couple things to remember is because you're only focusing on the rear screen, when you have polarized sunglasses and you go uh, portrait mode shooting vertically like this, the screen goes blank. So then you gotta kinda look through like that or I guess you have to spin your head. So that's one of the things that you have to consider when you're always using the rear LCD screen. Now let's quickly go over the pros of the camera and my number one pro of this camera really is uh, it has the, the GR DNA in here. And one of the one of the things that I always liked about the GR and I, and I wish other camera brands did it was that when you do a long press on the play button with the camera off, the camera does turn on and it goes right to uh, uh, your folder, what picture that you've actually taken. And I, and I like that. And then when you half press, so it's in play mode, half press, and then it, comes awake and you're ready to shoot. So at times when the camera's off and you just wanna quickly look at the images you've shot, well, you could do that by just doing a long press on the play. And a lot of the Fujifilm cameras like the XF10 doesn't do that. Long press play does nothing. You have to turn on the camera, lens comes out, and then you press play. And then it's in shooting mode and I don't want to waste that much battery putting the lens out and ready to shoot. I also love the, the folder system, and I think Canon does it as well, and I think more brands should do it, which is uh, you can set it for every day is a new folder, and especially uh, when you wanna organize your pictures by day, when you're on a vacation or something, it's great to have it per folder per day. And then when I'm ingesting, it's a lot easier to be able to find the images. As well, I like that at the end of the day when you turn your camera off, every time it tells you how many pictures. So when I turn this off right now, it says today, I've taken nine pictures. And that's just these little things that make the, the UI experience really good. Um, the U1 to U3, so the user settings one to three, you can actually save up to six of them, and then but you can only have three set to one, two, three anytime. You can name them whatever you want, and it is the deepest custom setting that you can do on any camera uh, that's out there. I think you could probably do over 50 or 60 settings. Like for instance, let's just say you have your snap focus distance at a specific distance at one U, like say U1 setting, you have it at street black and white and you have it set at two meters and then you have it auto set to, to manual focus and then you have a specific JPEG profile and then even all your custom, like your you press in and you have the five, uh, quick access features, all those things are custom. 
So then your next user setting, you can have a different JPEG profile, you can have autofocus, you can have five different custom settings. The whole way that you interact, it almost becomes a different camera. And I don't know of any other camera brand that goes so far to let you set up the camera any way you want. I mean, I still wish that the, you know, up is macro and down is uh, down is white balance. I do like where the white balance is and I do like where the ISO is, but you know, some people might want them in different positions, but either way, the fact that you can have three different user settings, so even if it's three different people or for you, you have black and white street, you have outdoor landscape, and then you have whatever with family, you know, just snapshots of family, each one, each custom setting, everything changes and that, that deep setting has always been a GR DNA, right from the film cameras, how everything is easy, accessible, and quick to shoot, and then every digital GR really focused on custom settings. So uh, that's something I really like about the GR. If you're used to that from other GRs, then that's just something you come to expect from Rico, and it's great to have the, the three there. And then if you do wanna shoot video, which not many of you guys do, the quick access to video here instead of it being up here. Although I don't know why they didn't put it up here. It would have been fine up here anyways. Um, the redesign of the lens, everyone said how sharp it was, how great it was. I wanted to see for myself. And as you can see with the picture behind me, uh, shot at night at F5, but even when I shot at F2.8, this is the sharpest GR lens that I've seen any of the digital GRs. And it is just right up there with any prime uh, 28, millimeter, uh, 28 millimeter equivalent on any of the brands out there. I, I challenge anyone to take this lens and put it up against any other lens of this focal length. This is a super, super sharp lens. Plus you have the 24 megapixel sensor that does not have an AA filter. You can sort of mimic the AA if the image gets too sharp. And I, there was some situations where I felt that I would need it, but you can always do that in post. And I did also like how much you can do in post, like in camera raw. It's uh, quite deep, including the, the color profile, the, the, the JPEG profiles. Each one, uh, you know, instead of um, having sharp sharpening applied to all the images, you go into that specific, so let's just say um, positive film or black and white high contrast. Each one of those, you can adjust the, um, the sharpness, the contrast, all that kind of thing is all there. So it's very deep and it's great that you can then, so you can take a picture, you set a default uh, JPEG profile, and then after, if you're shooting uh, DNG RAW, which I recommend that you do that with this camera, and then you can make multiple versions of that after playing with the different JPEG profiles. The only thing is, in post, you can't apply it, and I'll talk about that later. But uh, overall, the the playing around in in camera was actually really fun. Uh, doing um, post with the DNG raw files, it does take a bit of processing power. It, it, it kind of lags. You can adjust something, like to say two stops, and then it, there's a bit of a pause, and then it applies. So I wish it was a little bit faster. But I understand we're dealing with thirty me uh, thirty megabyte raw files. It's about 10 to 15 megabyte JPEG files, or about 25 to 30 megabyte RAW files. So I understand it takes quite a bit of processing power to, to create your own JPEGs in camera while dealing with these huge RAW files, but it did a pretty, pretty darn good job. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Although this camera is compact and light, the build quality is nice. I heard some reviewers say it felt plasticky. I don't know what that means. Um, this is a magnesium alloy body. It's always been ever since the, ever since the film Rico GRs. They've always been well built, uh, but I think maybe because they're they're light and compact, uh, there is kind of a kind of a maybe a, a a a paint like a shell on this, and this is probably a rubberized grip here. Um, a lot of people complain about this falling off. I never had a problem with this falling off. I think maybe what it is is like I shoot, as you can see, I shoot with this around my neck. And I just carry this around like this, but I guess some people do put this in their pocket. And for those of you who do do that, maybe you can comment down below. Do you put Loctite or do you put like I don't know some kind of a um, threading tightener or something in here? But just remember that there are contacts in here. So when you put on the the ultra wide converter, uh, the camera automatically knows and it tell it's embedded in the XF data that you use the ultra wide converter. So that's great. But uh, build quality is nice. I, th I th like every other GR. Over time, sometimes this little rubber grip starts to shift and wear out, but then you can just replace this. I think there's some third-party people that can uh, do that for you. And 
finally, let's talk about this uh, GW4. It's big and ugly, and I wish that Rico could have made this without having to use the adapter. But, um, and it's not always easy to, you just kind of have to kind of remember that, oh, I gotta take the ring off here. Take the ring off. I know that the the little little um, tab here is up here, so now it's locked in. It's no longer super compact, but it's still reasonably compact. Out on the street when I walked with this, it still felt like I had a small camera. And again, I'm shooting this with it around my neck like this, walking around like this, so it's still reasonably compact. And this GW4, uh, Ricoh's been quite well known for the quality of their ultra wide, and not only did Rico have a uh, LTM uh, version of the 28 lens, which you could put on Leica cameras. They also made a, a 21 millimeter uh, version as well. And uh, this is a, a smoking lens and I've embedded some in the intro and I'll probably embed some now, but I was impressed. Shooting with this on the street, including architecture, including people, street style, the high contrast black and white, I think uh, this combo is a killer street combo, and I do wish that Rico came out with an actual dedicated Rico GRD21, maybe one day in the future. So those are my pros of the Rico GR3. And let's go over the cons, and there's more cons, but it's not all necessarily bad. It really depends on what your expectations is on this camera. But cons, uh, not great for extreme bright outdoors and not great for low light because there's a lack of an EVF, right? So that's, and that's kind of, it's, it is a con, but the, since the original Ricoh GR Digital that came out in 2005 uh, and all the iterations after that, that's just kind of how this has always been. So if you can't live without an EVF, then don't bother buying this camera. That's just the way it is. Um, as I mentioned before, screen goes blank if you're wearing polarized sunglasses. That's true with any other camera that that uh, has LCD screens, but because you're, you only have this, it's something to consider. Um, autofocus is better, but it's not that, like in certain situations, like backlit situations, it still does seem to struggle. It's doing not too bad right now in my studio, but um, and when it's dark, it's not great. And then manual focus isn't great. So that's something I would uh, ask uh, Rico to, to work on is manual focus. And I mentioned in my previous video, have the focus uh, scale, not like, like one inch, but across the bottom here, uh, three inches, so that you can see, you can manual focus better. That's one thing. And even maybe there's a manual focus on the outside, that would make a huge difference. Uh, if, you know, until the autofocus catches up. But even then, I think manual focus really needs to be improved. Ergonomics, it feels like a GR from the back, but if you look at the previous GR and a GR2, um, I felt that the thumb real estate was really great on this camera. There's a lot of room, unlike other compact point shoots, the RX100 um, Sony's, it was just, too tiny and shooting all day, it just felt really comfortable with the with the previous GRs. This is not uncomfortable because it is, it is a light camera, but when you put the GW4 ultra wide converter, it starts to get heavy and there just isn't much thumb real estate back here. So um, I understand that they made this camera lighter and smaller and that's kind of a plus, I guess, but I don't think anyone asks for a smaller camera. It's kind of like how Apple makes things thinner and people like, we didn't ask for a thinner iPhone, it was thin enough. And so in that way, I appreciate that it's smaller and lighter, but if it was slightly wider and they included flash and they gave you more thumb real estate, uh, I think that's a better trade-off. So, uh, you know, this was a good size. And so that ergonomics is not as good as the, as the previous model. Another thing that people complain about is the is the battery life, 200 shots, SEPA rating. Uh, the GRs never had that great of a battery life because to have a camera this small, uh, you need batteries this tiny and this is a really, really small battery. And so um, I accept that. I accept that uh, the, 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 because the camera, even the previous version here that I said I don't mind, it is bigger. The battery is bigger on here, but the actual um, the, the battery life, the milliamp hours is actually less on this. So they could definitely improve the battery life by going with a slightly bigger battery and still have an improved battery life. But you're still never going to get you know, five, six, seven hundred shots out of this because your focus, 
you know, you're always using the rear screen and that's kind of the nature of this. So I say just buy multiple batteries. That's, that's just what you have to do. No built-in flash. As I mentioned before, for me, not a big deal. I use the EF X20 flash. I have this around my neck. Uh, ergonomically, as I showed in my other video, it'd be nice if it was like this, the flash was on this side, so you could keep the same thin profile. And this is kind of an awkward shape. It almost feels like a T or an L shape because of the flash, but I like using an external flash because it uses, you know, I have quick manual exposure settings here and I'm not wasting, I'm not draining the battery power because flash takes up a lot of power. So I prefer an external flash, but for a camera to remain a compact point and shoot, even though it's not something that I use often, like the XF10, it has its own built-in flash. This doesn't have a hot shoe, which I wish it did, but at least it has a, a little flash. If you go to a wedding, a dinner party, and you're just using this as kind of a, you know, let's do a group photo. Even smartphones now have that weird, the screen kind of goes bright, so it does have a flash. And so I think this should have a flash. And so Rico, if you can maybe come up with something that you can attach that's designed specifically for the GR that is compact, because if I go to a wedding, um, I probably would take my older GR because it has a little pop-up flash, so I can just sort of carry this with me. So that, that's something I think principally this camera should have a flash. Video. I know Rico in their literature said there's nothing in here that's like it's stripped down and they don't put any in, anything in here that's not necessary and yet the the of the menus tab the second tab is video so it seems like it's it's a feature that they're featuring or else the video should be further down right it should be below custom and all that kind of stuff but um, I, I don't mind Rico having video but the video needs a lot of improvement I'm glad there's IBIS, uh, there's over sharpening, you can't manually control. I'm glad there's 24, 30, 60, but I have a feeling that there's probably drop frames in a shooting video. I did a video test with camera go and I'll embed it here. All right guys, so this is the video test portion of the Ricoh GR3. Lots of ambient noise, so even with a decent system, other than if I had a lavalier, audio is gonna be horrible. But on top of that, I have the wide angle converter, the uh, GW4, and the microphones are right in the front. And they're pointing forward, but the, the, um, the wide angle adapter is probably in the way. But this is more about the video, not the audio. And as I, a lot of people probably already mentioned, this is probably not the greatest camera for video, but it's a step ahead because it's a step up from the GR2 and the GR because of course there's image stabilization. I hope that in the future, and if, even if they could do it in firmware, use a USB-C connector as an external microphone uh, connector so you can actually put like a, a Rode Video Micro on top. And I have Camera Girl help me, so thank you so much Camera Girl. And that's it for the video test portion of Rico GR3. And you know, you can use some of the like a positive film. I use the high contrast black and white. You can do kind of weird artsy kind of stuff and you can get away with video, but this isn't gonna be your primary video camera. And even having the USB-C connection here, they can, if they can, make that allow to take on external microphone. So external microphone, plug in USB-C, you know, that, that, that helps. I actually found that the, the built-in microphones weren't that bad. And so maybe work on video, a lot of it's software. It took Fuji a while for their video to get really, really good. And now with the X-T3, X-T3 is fantastic. So it takes generations to do that. And because this hasn't been updated really in six years, I, 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 know, I understand why the video is not that great. And so let's look forward to the future, better video. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and mobile app. The, the UI, the, <laughs> the user interface, uh, the, the way that the application is applied, it really needs a big update. Uh, Fujifilm doesn't have a great ecosystem as well, but it's definitely better than Ricoh, and it just seems like it's something they're really lagging behind. Uh, maybe they can ask uh, another brand, like hire a team to come in and really, even the, the, the Image Sync app just feels very, feels very early 2000s and it just it's not a great experience you can't ad hoc transfer images so you don't need an existing wi-fi connection to transfer and it transfers the raw files right to my ipad or my iphone which is great but being able to use an app to even trigger images trigger video use it as a monitor that kind of thing it needs a lot of help and one of the things that fujifilm has which maybe something i can recommend Rico to do is that they allow you to use 
the, the camera's processor to work and post off your computer. So you basically plug your, your camera into your computer and you can actually process the raw files using the processor in here. So you can actually use positive film, high contrast black and white while uh, processing your raw files. And I think that's great. But you know, Rico needs a lot of help to do that and understand why these things are not the most important thing. But as I always mention, I think the future of these compact point shoots and just cameras in general is connectivity because fewer and fewer people are buying dedicated cameras, especially point and shoots. And because of that, uh, one of the reasons is they're all going to their smartphone, right? They're all going to their iPhone or any kind of a mobile phone because they're more connected, they're easier to share. You go to weddings and everyone's just using their smartphones. Make these cameras more connected, make it easier to upload images, to share images, to push images to other people. And if they do that, I think more people would, this camera would appeal to more people as well as having flash. And the final con is really the, the six years for a major update. Uh, the GR uh, came out in 2013, and the GR2 came out in 2015, but it basically added Wi-Fi. There was no real major change. So imagine this came out in 2015. Now, I don't think in 2015, IBIS would have been around, and I think even in 2015, they would have stuck with a, a 16 megapixel sensor still, but then in 2017, I think they could have come out with this and that would have been the uh, you know GR4 or actually would have been still GR3 and then all the little quirks and you know I was complaining about not having flash and it's too small and a bigger battery by 2019 it would have been the GR4 and they could have fixed all that fixed video and all those kind of things and so uh, you know six years for a major update I understand from the GR2 to this camera people expected a lot of things and I think IBIS was kind of unexpected, but really pleasing. I, I think that's probably one of the, the biggest things about this, but waiting that long, I think, is the biggest handicap that this camera had. And so those are my cons, not all of them are real cons uh, for GR shooters, but for those that are considering, I thought I would kind of go through all of them. So let's go to my final conclusion. All right, before I do my conclusion, I thought I would change over to my other Ricoh GR1. And this is a recent release from Uniqlo, and it is of this original film, Rico GR. Can you kind of see the resemblance here? Anyways, let's move on. I love this shirt. Um, conclusions, it, it shoots and it feels like a GR with obvious generational updates. And that's just with any camera. And you're gonna have those that like the changes, some who won't like the changes. I do like the touch screen, I do really like the IBIS and I mean this is a crazy like so this is a super sharp lens uh, great field of view I like the 28 millimeter equivalent and you have IBIS and so imagine this kind of package like this this small and it's it'll compete with any interchangeable lens camera or DSLR with an APS-C size sensor it'll compete with it and it fits inside your pocket so if you are a 28 millimeter equivalent or a 21 millimeter equivalent shooter to have something this compact this is this is mind-blowing the, the iq on this is just crazy uh so uh I, I mean overall i just think even though there's some of the negatives that we talked about not having the flash i'm going smaller and you know there's some heat issues because you're going smaller all those all those things that, that are points of contention with some of the grists I, you know, I, I'm also a GRist. I've owned the original film GR. I've had the smaller GRD4 compact censored ones. I have the original uh, APS-C GR. I love shooting with the Ricoh GR. And I can learn to adapt to this even with the missing flash because I use external flash. Even with the battery issue, I'll have more batteries. I don't mind the heating. I, I don't like the cramped thumb really state here, it, it, it kind of bothers me, but I did quickly get used to ISO. Like I know now, left on the D-pad and then spin this, spin this outer wheel. Some people say it feels loose. It's it's not loose, it's just, I think that's just the way it is. It's just, it's it's this spinning style and it's just, just like this rear toggle. It always had this weird springy, kind of plasticky kind of feel. And uh, so, it's not great, but it's just kind of what you you have. So you, you you're gonna just have to get used to it. But uh, getting the 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 GR here with the adapter, which you need. Uh, wish it's gone, but it, it is connected electronically, so the camera knows. It's it's a great great combo when you're out there shooting. So for those that like 
those two fields of view, it doesn't matter if you shoot street, because people talk about this as a street shooter, you could be a landscape architectural 21 millimeter, 28 millimeter shooter. For those things, this is still really good. You're not gonna shoot sports with this, but uh, it's the IBIS and the lens combination that really is the highlight of this camera with uh, the caveat of no flash and small battery life. I think that's really the, the, the biggest uh, negative and and comparing it I did do comparisons with this for image quality uh, the the XF10 does very well especially when you compare this with other Fujifilm full ILC cameras uh, it's a Bayer sensor that's in here this lens is the same lens from the X70 so in terms of the lens this GR lens is definitely sharper than the XF10 but this is still a good lens especially in the center it's still very sharp you stop it down the f5.6 it's a sharp lens it's good but it doesn't compare to this. And as well, this doesn't have IBIS. This actually does have better, uh, for me, customizable dials, not necessarily controls, but the dials are more customizable. It has a, a, an outer ring here you can set to focus, and you have two customizable dials here. I mean, this is a, a good camera, but there's no IBIS. It doesn't have a pro processor in here. It has their consumer level processor. And so in terms of like build quality and who it's marketed for, this is still a consumer level camera. This is a pro, uh, you know, targeted to pros or those looking for for top quality, image quality in an APS-C size sensor camera with IBIS. But you know, this is 900 US and this is 450 US. So this is at this time currently in the summer of 2019, um, this is half the price. You could buy two of these for one of these. And so that's a huge difference. This is a modular. You can't add any external lenses. You can't add an external flash. You can't do a lot with this camera, but it is what it is. It's a compact point and shoot with an APS-C size sensor with aperture control, uh, manual controls. This does a great job. And I this has been my daily point and shoot for the past six months. And I, I, I think this is a great camera, but this is a different monster completely. Uh, this really is for someone who wants top quality in a super compact size. And one last quick thing I wanted to talk about is uh, people talking about the, um, uh, the, the, the lens and how uh, they're worried about dust and sensor. Um, one of the, the construction of the GR is that you have six elements in four groups. None of the elements shift in focus, the entire barrel. So within here, within this outer barrel, there's an inner barrel. And when the camera focuses, the entire, all six lens groups shift. It's not like one lens group. Then that's why something like this, when you turn it on, it barely, the lens barely comes up. And when you focus, there's internal focus elements within the lens that shifts. And that's one of the reasons why the GR is so sharp is because the distance between all the lenses are fixed. And from the factory, they make sure that the lens is super sharp. The negative of that is all six lens group, all six lenses are always moving in and out, which is part of the reason why it doesn't focus as fast because everything is shifting. And it also allows for the macro, because when you go into macro mode, bang, the whole lens elements shift into macro mode, right? But again, all six shift. And so because of that, um, the, the, the positive is the lens is sharp and it's consistent. The negative is the entire thing is shifting, and when the whole thing is shifting in and out, guess what? You get a suction, and that suction can draw dust in. So uh, Rico hopefully has done more than just having the sensor shake to remove dust off sensor, but they've actually you know, put a little bit more insulation or something around here so there's less dust coming in. I mean, we won't know until six months to a year if people are complaining about dust issues on the sensor, but uh, I never had an issue. I've always had this around my neck, as I mentioned, or inside a camera bag. So even all my digital Ricoh GRs, I never had a dust issue, but some have. So I thought I would just mention that uh, for those of you that are trying to understand why Ricoh designs the, the camera this way. It just has to do with the way they design the lens, which has both a positive and a negative. So thank you so much for watching. Thanks for your support, guys. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. Tell your friends. Uh, I would love to grow this channel. I would love to get more views, more comments, so that I can do more for you. As you notice, I still don't have sponsors yet. I'm not against sponsors, but uh, you know, your views and your likes is really what's keeping this brand going. I do have, um, uh, you know, affiliate links down below. Whatever you buy, it doesn't have to be cameras. I still get a kickback. If you do that, I'd appreciate that as well. But uh, let's keep going, guys. Let's keep on making videos. 
Thank you again, and we'll talk to you soon. Happy shooting. Peace.